Ooh, what's up guys, and of course, as always, welcome back to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with your of course, the Skyrender. And yeah, today we're going to go against Zack in, of course, a PU match, and I'm using the same team as I used yesterday on this upload, and that is a Scarfaro and your weakness policy Parasect, Miltank, Lantern, being Assault Vested, uh, Sandslash, Leftovers, Bulky as all hell, with a bit of a Speedy Beast, uh, with, uh, you know, the regular stuff, Knockoff, Earthquake, and Stealth Rock Spin, and Fight MC Oranguru. So, a pretty stellar team, with Parasect being heavily willed down, basically, to its viability. Parasect is very hard to use, I'm not gonna negate that. And we're gonna get against a very interesting team. The team itself here is with Sangus without Sticky Web. This is always interesting, because that means that he has some kind of end game with Sangus. We're just gonna retire capitalize on its speed here, which isn't all that good for a wall breaker. Night did really leave it with some things to be of course wavered with and it's very hard to use due to it. But then again, you know, it's still a very powerful one. We also see Kecleon, which is all an issue and could it be actually the self rocker of the team. We also see Hitmonchan, which always are great. Um, probably the best spinner in PU at the moment. Haunter, which always are an issue. Raichu, which is, you know, alright. It is. It can be everything or nothing, basically, depending on its set. And Crustle. And I rarely see Crustle. It's actually, without a doubt in my mind, one of the scariest Shell Smasher in PU due to its natural stab just hurts everything. And that's very hard to be dealing with. And with Rocky MC, it's one of the stronger Shell Smasher in the whole game, or at least in PU. So yeah, with that said, I'm just going to lead off with my Pharaoh and just hopefully it was something I can deal with. So with that said, let's go with the match. So yeah, Pharaoh is a start, and he's gonna start with his Sangus, and this, this definitely showcases one thing, he's gonna go for Protect, no way in hell he's gonna do this differently. So with this in mind, I'm gonna go for a double edge, just to force him out really, there is no way a Sangus takes a double edge, I figured, if, you know, if I do something, I can definitely go for double edge, and scare him out, and then switch into something more decent. So the more decent thing for me is Maurice, the, um, what do you call it? <laughs> Ranguru, as it brings Crustle, which I feel was a very fair switch in. Now, I'll go directly for the Fight UMC, I was gonna say, but no, I'll go for Nasty Plug, I'm just that cool, as um, he's gonna go for uh, an Excisor, and Excisor does do a decent chunk, showing me that that is offensive, that's not a defensive spiker. He's just gonna switch out here, figuring out that, you know, wow, he's Nasty Plotting, son of a gun, as I'm gonna go for, of course, the all-out pummeling, and to be honest, I thought it was a strange sack play. I kind of figured that, you know, if you want to be capitalizing on something, I felt that, you know, doing a play like this would definitely negate any kind of functionality with Raichu. So with that said, you know, I felt that was a big risk because he lost a big speed here. Well, it's actually sashed. So uh, for what is worth, cool. That's that's unfortunate. Mainly because I don't necessarily have switching here. I really thought it was strange of him going for Thunderbolt, seeing you know, both a Sand Slash and Lantern on my team, but hell. No, I could have switched out to them just to really mess with him. I didn't do that. So I bring my Scarf Riffiel Pharaoh and he stays in and we're gonna pop him because we're Scarfed. Yay. <laughs> so we pop that. You know, Pharaoh is so cool. I really, really appreciate that, man. So I gotta bring Parasect here. I figured, you know, if there is any time it's gonna be usable, it's probably now. As he brings in the Sangus, I feel, all right, we can at least get some poison damage on things. So I'm gonna go for the Endure. You know, I am manly. I am one of the coolest guys around. As he goes for the Airlays, and you know, that's wow. Though I do believe Facade would have been easy KO too, but hell, we get the weakness policy showing what we're all about. But yeah, as you guys already know, you know, there is really not a whole lot happening here now, is it? We're, we're, we're gonna not die. <laughs> so I went for another Endure just for the hell of it. I really can't attack him in the first play anyway, so Shroom Falls, yeah, that's that's new, Parasect being viable and all. But yeah, I'm gonna bring my big Moo here, and I'm not gonna lie, I really thought Return was in range here to be for him to KO. It is not, and, and not only that, it goes for close combat, which clearly, for some reason, kills the Militag, which I felt was really, really, really awful. Because Militech would have been a tremendous threat towards this team. I have no idea why I did that play. And also survives with 1 HP with um, <laughs> from the Toxic. So I'm going to bring the Riffiel. And the only play I have here is go directly again for a U-turn. I do you believe I optimized here. Um, I'm trying to figure out. No, I went for a U-turn. That was a safe play. That was definitely a safe play. As Haunter comes in. Now, Haunter is tough for me to be dealing with. So I've decided to go into my Lantern here. My Belly Thee. Basically, we'll go for a Volt Switch, getting some momentum shifting going. As he goes for a trick, 
making my lantern, I really can't raise this enough, a scarfed lantern. How cool is that? As the Volt Switch will do a decent chunk because Haunter isn't necessarily bulky. You know, we have a Salt Vest Haunter on the field. I can go back in the refield knowing that I definitely outspeed now. Well, I did that before even. And I go through safe Drill Pack. Drill Pack hurts everything on his team fairly well. So I felt that was overall the best to play as it brings on Kecleon. Now it's whether or not I want to take a fake out. And I had to think about it and I thought, nope, I do not. I don't know if I'm going to take a fake out. So I bring in Kaysure, my defensive Sand Slash, and all I'm really going to do is you know, soak it. And Sand Slash really, really soak that fake out. That's not hurting. <laughs> not hurting at all. Um, so I actually decided to go for knockoff here just to scout his item. To be honest, I really was hoping it was something else, but it's actually an Assault Vest and not Leftovers, and it's going to retaliate with a knockoff, knocking off my Leftovers. So we do not see Ice Punch yet, and I felt that that's good. He's, of course, when he's a Dark Titan, I'm making knockoff super effective towards him. So I was fully aware of that. So I felt he's probably going to sack play, so I can go easily for a Stealth Rock, getting those no munch munch rocks up. Because the end game is now all about whether or not I can deal with Crustle. And we still have Hitmonchan, we still have priority Pokemon that definitely just do damage towards us. So I definitely thought he's going to go for spinning here. There's no way he would have played this thing differently. As he goes for an Ice Punch, very surprised about this play. We do survive it though, because we are defensive as all hell. And we retaliate with an Earthquake. Now, I was debating how I wanted to play this last part. Uh, I decided to go for a Stealth Rock here in case he went for a Rapid Spin. Luckily, he goes for Drain Punch. Uh, it's whether or not he actually has, or what do you call it, whether or not he actually has the, um, the rapid spin at all. But I, I kind of figure here that my best series of play here is actually go into Pharaoh, locking myself into Drill Pack, and really, really, really hope that he's not a Shell Smash set. And if he is, hopefully the Drill Pack is enough for a 2 hit KO after Rocks. So with that in mind, Pharaoh is either going to make it or break it for us. And trust me, it is going to come down to the wire. So Crystal comes in. And, you know, clearly we see a lot of damage onto the Stealth Rock. We go for Drill Pack, and it looks like it could possibly get there. We did, be, I mean, it's it definitely a roll here, but we should still be in an area where we should be able to possibly KO. And definitely after a Shell Smash, but he's going to show us, of course, the White Herb. We're still able to outspeed because Crustle is very slow and we are Scarfed. So we're able to outspeed one more turn, and we're just about shy of a KO there, sadly. And he's going to tell with the next sister. And trust me, guys, sadly... This is also a loss yet again to be uploaded. And it's very unfortunate, but it basically came down to whether or not I could KO the Crustle. And being White Herb, yeah, that meant that the game was already over because we couldn't do the damage we needed to. And it's very unfortunate that Fer did not get a Brave Bird in, um, what do you call it, in Pokemon because he definitely needed that. The extra damage boost is definitely missing out on that. While Drill Pick is all fair and dandy. It was very clear that for this matchup, it needed the extra power, and sadly, we did lack it. But yeah, definitely a good game to my opponent here, Sack, who I definitely believe did play a bit strange. I won't deny that fact. I think he did some questionable play, but it did definitely work in his favor, because I really was expecting more, making me look like a fool here, but quite frankly, he did probably do all that was necessary to be able to actually capitalize on Crustle, and through that, of course, becomes the winner, because let's face it, he did what basically was required for his Crustle to win this matchup. I think I do the biggest misplay myself, actually, being that I actually used Milk Tank as a way to KO the Sangus. I had the option with other Pokemon to be able to capitalize on that. Not to say the least, at that point, you no know, Pharaoh would have been very, very viable, much, much over Milk Tank to be able to actually just snag that KO. So that's a big, big misplay from my side. You know, stuff like that will happen. But it definitely backfired here because Double Edge would have been a nicer play overall. Even Drill Pick, I do presume, would be more. And of course, Miltang is not necessarily that easily KO'd by Crustle. So, yeah, very unfortunate. But at the same time, you know, this is the game we play. So we will choke from time to time. And Sack definitely did some really cool plays, which made his overarching theme a lot better than mine, making him the worthy winner here. So, with that said, guys, as always, thank you for, of course, watching. Make sure to check out me on the Discord channel down below if you want to battle me. To get it with, of course, checking me out on Twitter. And, of course, if you want to battle me, make sure to even send it in the comment section below with the follow text. I am a pussy, and I'll follow that up. Anyway, guys, as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.